In the last video, we ran a free for all to thin out the impressive quantity of lifeforms you all submitted for the first ever Bibit tournament. It ended up being an extremely gruesome and cruel fight. Bibits are actual lifeforms that need to eat to survive after all, and they were far too many bibits in the same environment. All the bigger species starved from not finding enough food, being covered by smaller parasites, slowly draining their blood, probably didn't help. These are the kind of things that you can expect in the fascinating world of the bibbits. After the cutthroat freefall, we were left with 16 extremely optimized species that we will be pitting against each other in a 1v1 bracket tournament to determine the ultimate life form. As announced, each match will start with 10 individuals from each species and end after one species goes extinct. If both species remain after one hour, then the species with the most biomass will be declared the winner and move to the next round. Mutations will be turned off so that every species competes as they were submitted. So, let's start with the first fight. Obscuris Irreventis versus Darwin's Disaster. We spawn 10 of both species randomly across the map and start the simulation. They both start reproducing, but Obscuris takes the lead. Initially, they don't interact much as their population are small relative to their environment but as each population grows, they start colliding with one another and competing over the finite resources. Surprisingly, even though Obscuris started off strong, Darwin Disasters fares a lot better in this phase. After one hour, they make up the vast majority of the final population. In fact, we can expect most matches to follow a similar pattern, which is analogous to existing and real ecosystem dynamics. First, when we start the match, we only have a few individuals of each species, and the environment has a lot of resources. In both species, we can observe an exponential growth, as they take advantage of this abundance and colonize their environment. As the species overconsume and reach the limit of their environment's carrying capacity, you can observe a collapse of their food source and a resulting crash in both populations. After this, the bibits and the plant population will reach a more stable equilibrium of production and consumption. Now that the environment is filled, both species will now officially be competing for the same ecological niche with a limited carrying capacity, so the species best adapted to this environment will gradually outcompete the other to extinction. One down. Next, Ramsey Jr. versus Beyblade. This is going to be a funny fight, because Ramsey Jr. is the biggest of the contestants and Beyblade is one of the smallest. So by spawning 10 of each, Ramsey starts off with a total biomass nearly 5 times higher than Beyblade. Starting the sim, we indeed see the same pattern as the previous match, however Ramsey Jr. was just better at converting its food into more Ramsey Juniors. It's still interesting to see that even though Ramsey wins on the total energy department, after the one hour limit, there was a higher count of Beyblade. Unfortunately for Beyblade, that wasn't the condition for winning the match. I know I'm going fast, but we have a lot of them to cover and it gets a lot more interesting in the later rounds, where I'll analyze things more in depth. Next, Parva Fragrum versus Magnus Terra, which are both very small. Parva had a far faster reproduction cycle, but funnily enough, Magnus Terra ended up outcompeting it. Magnus Terra had a very good avoidance behavior that Parva Fragrum lacked completely. In this case, through stimulating its herding neuron with the right associated behavioral genes, Magnus Terra is able to keep a reasonable distance from others. That adaptation is generally very favorable for a species in the tournament, as it prevents collisions which are often deadly, and can even help a species be better at dispersing through their environment. Next, Luscus X hybridus against Multido Insectum. Luscus takes the lead, being a very fast reproducer. 
After the initial drop-off, Multidoo population kept dwindling but managed to hold on for quite a while thanks to their very low metabolism, which allowed them to survive on the edge of the map where Luscus didn't venture too much. Next, Skippy Grabby vs Apophis Apocalypsis. We see Skippy growing rapidly but that's not enough as the superior avoidance behavior of Apophis allowed it to be straight up better. This swing, however, is the most impressive we've seen so far. Next, Parvam Cyrillum versus Mikantes Okuri. Mikantes is a slower reproducer, not even being able to lay an egg right after reaching maturity, because laying an egg costs them more than their maximum energy at this level of growth meaning that they still have to grow for a while before being able to finally have offsprings. Parvam is just a superior species and takes the win. And now, a long-awaited fight. Bibi versus the fan favorite, Father. After the last video, I asked you all to vote on who you thought would win the tournament and more than a third of you voted for father because of the way its creator described it. Small, weak, inefficient, dumb, miserable creature, poor guy. So initially, father does a lot better, reproducing up to four times faster than its competitors. At some point, an incredible giga pellet even formed due to all the bivets pushing their pellets together. However, sadly, over time, Bibi gradually outcompeted Father, who lacked an avoidance behavior, and ended up taking the crown. Sorry to disappoint all of you, but Father will forever stay in our hearts. And for the final match of this round, we have newbie competitor against Minima Unorum. However, the match was very much so one-sided as Newbie started reproducing fast and Minima wasn't even able to lay eggs right as it reaching maturity, just like Mikantes earlier. Minima didn't even have an avoidance behavior, which was the final nail in the coffin. So, in summary, the first round mostly wiped out all the competitors that didn't have an avoidance behavior. It seems like it was an absolute necessity in this setup. Getting back to it, we have Newbie Competitor versus Bibi, the two winners of their respective matches. But in this match, the winner is evident. In fact, Newbie was so much better than Bibi that Bibi's population never really managed to take off. Newbie reproduction cycle speed absolutely crushed Bibi, being five times faster. This is the most brutal difference we've seen so far. However, Bibi managed to stay around for a while as it survived of meat from corpses, which Nubi ignored. Next, we have Parvam Cerilum against Apophis Ocapalypsis, two very strong contenders that have a lot in common. They both stimulate their herding neuron when grabbing food, resulting in similar avoidance behavior. However, Parvam was able to gain a slight hedge through a faster reproduction cycle, which ended up compounding, asserting them the win. Next, Luscus Ixibridus versus Magnus Terra. Luscus is a lot bigger than Magnus, as even its newborns are bigger than a mature Magnus. Astonishingly, Luscus also reproduced faster than Magnus, so in the end it wasn't really a fair fight. It didn't even last the full hour, as the last Magnus disappeared after 50 minutes. And for the final match of the quarterfinals, Ramsey Jr. versus Darwin's Disaster. Ramsey's bigger body provided them with an early advantage, which resulted in a massive lead in the colonization phase. But surprisingly, Darwin's disaster's impressive energy efficiency and low metabolism ended up slowly and methodically outcompeting Ramsey in the low resource phase, which allowed them to come out on top. Looking back on this round, we saw some very interesting results. First, Nubi's explosive and monstrous reproduction rates makes it a very dangerous foe, but at the same time, Darwin's disasters ended up showing that an early lead is not always sufficient to guarantee a victory, and that efficiency is paramount. So let's not lose too much time and go into the semi-finals. First, Nubi competitor against Parvum Cerium. 
Unsurprisingly, Nubi takes the early lead, as it did in its previous matches, but Parvam follows it pretty closely as it's also a very fast reproducer. They have a similar body size, but Parvam's metabolism was higher and it didn't have as good avoidance features as Nubi. This led to Nubi very easily maintaining its advantage during the competition phase and taking the win after one hour. And deciding our second finalist, the match opposing Luscus Ixibridus versus Darwin's Disaster. Luscus started off with a far faster growth than Darwin, but we've already seen Darwin's comeback under similar circumstances. Darwin's kept growing in numbers, but Luscus' more reckless behavior led it to colliding with Darwin pretty often, killing a lot of individuals, which ended up having its toll on the final numbers and crowning Luscus as the one who'll be fighting the mighty newbie. Incredible! So we head into the finals with two very impressive species. Before going through with it, let's take some time to look at both in a little more details. Newbie competitor is a truly monstrous beast. They are an extremely advanced species that evolved over almost 10,000 generations to be heavily optimized and efficient. First of all, due to how I decided to handle the energy storage of the bibbits, they lose any excess energy they gain. If a bibbit's energy reserve is full and it would gain more, it is instead wasted and returned to the wild. Nubi has evolved neural pathways to manage their energy in order to never run into this problem, basically through evolving a two-phase life cycle. In its premature phase, an individual will conserve their energy and completely stop their growth until they can find food. They will keep all their stored energy reserves in order to move and hope to find sustenance. Once it does and starts gaining energy from digestion, it begins balancing its growth in order to consume the right amount of energy and never have a completely full energy reserve. Growing is its main focus during this phase and it will cut off most of its other body functions in order to optimize it. It will also grow even more aggressively when it is around others. When it reaches maturity, it will enter its adult phase. Energy diverted to growth will rapidly drop off and it will instead use egg laying as its energy sink, basically becoming an egg producing factory, laying an egg every 20 seconds. In front of Nubi, Luscus Ixibridus, a species with a far more complex and entangled neural network. It's very chaotic and hard to make sense of, but one particular node stands out. This latch neuron basically acts as a state switch that controls many central behaviors of the species. Its default state is to move around in search of food. They will also grow slowly, presumably to conserve energy for movement. However, as they manage to find food and take a hold of it, after some time, this neuron will toggle, resulting in a complete and drastic change in behavior. It will stop moving by default, speed up its digestion, starts growing a lot faster, and be a lot more wary of its surroundings, trying to keep a reasonable distance with others sharing its color. Luscus' growth profile is also very different, instead conserving a reasonable growth rate even after reaching maturity, resulting in them continuing to grow all their life. So let's get to it. Right off the start, they are pretty much evenly matched, having a nearly identical reproduction cycle during the colonization phase. Reaching environmental saturation, Nubi fared a lot better in the die-off, conserving a better share of its population, mainly due to its slower energy consumption and energy efficiency. However, after some time, Luscus' numbers surprisingly started rising again. I was confused, but looking into it, it was revealed that Luscus started instead eating the meat that was left around by the big die-off, a food source that Nubi simply ignored. Taking advantage of this, Luscus surprisingly regained the lead and jumped in front. After some time, and I wouldn't be able to explain why, Nubi took back the lead, and after the one armor mark was finally reached, Luscus managed to jump in front once again, becoming the grand winner of the world's first official digital life tournament. This was a surprise for everyone, 
I personally was certain that Nubi would end up as the easy winner. In fact, I did not share this publicly, but Nubi was already the clear winner of the free-for-all, being far above the rest in terms of biomass. In fact, most of the video script was written through this lens, and I had to rewrite parts of it that I had written in advance, thinking that the winner was already decided. I still think that Nubi, having a smaller, less costly brain and more efficient metabolism is a better generalist, a better survivor. But the specific mix of simulation parameters and interactions ended up favoring Luscus. Just to see, we did let the simulation keep running after one hour, but Nubi still ended up being wiped out after waiting long enough. This was also the only match that presented that oscillating exchange, hinting at a deeper dynamic between the two species. I tried looking into it, but I did not manage to understand the dynamics at play. Maybe some of you will have an idea, and if so, feel free to share it in the comments. I do read most of them. An interesting thing also was that Luscus evolved to use the green pigment of its species in order to stimulate its avoidance behavior, a pigment that Nubi completely lacked, resulting in Luscus not caring about running into members of the Nubi species, providing a non-negligible advantage. Results could have been wildly different if Nubi had a slightly different color. But no, Luscus indeed won surprising everyone, me the first. The fact that almost any other setup or rules would have given the win to Nubi really shows the beauty of life and evolution. They are such complex systems that very small differences can lead to wildly different outcomes. We will agree that the tournament heavily favored certain adaptations. So for this reason, we thought it would be fun to run a few additional experiments based on your ideas and comments on the last video. Since the initial free for all heavily selected for the smallest species, the community suggested that it would be interesting to rerun the free for all with just the 16 largest. With the starting population much reduced, there seemed to be a lot more breeding room for the giants to move around. Despite this improvement, it was apparent that a few of these pivots were not really fit for life. The biggest of them all, Zilla, did not even try to stay away from the void, and mostly started an epic journey to, well, nowhere. A lot of these species have a hard time turning due to their high momentum, and some didn't seem to be adapted to account for that. After 10 minutes, only 10 species were left. At this point, only a Tormund Saphirum managed to grow its population, with 7 individuals. The Immortal, which we've seen in the last video, had the most biomass carried between only 2 individuals. Its growth rate was insane, making it a species that grows to incredible proportions. Its excessive elderly mass led to the immortal slowly losing the ability to stay within the fertility zone due to its increased momentum drift. After 20 minutes, only 5 species were left. Big Chungus was down to 1 population and Q Jr. was in the lead at 9, with 50% more biomass than the second place species, a Tornman Saphirum. After one hour, only those two remained, with Q Jr. still in the lead, but over time, a Tormund Saphirum slowly took over and eventually wiped out Q Jr. This was probably due to similar dynamics that played out in the initial free for all. A Tormund just had faster reproduction cycle and more efficient lifestyle. As the 11th largest mission, a Tormund wasn't the smallest of the bunch. It may have gained an advantage over a few smaller contestants by being able to survive the frequent collisions with Q Jr. So we see that even there, by themselves, the bigger individuals were less adapted to the tournament simulation parameters. In my experience, bigger bibbits need a larger map and profit from a sparser world, 
where the food is densely packed in distant pockets, as they have the ability to survive the long journey from one fertile pocket to the next. Another interesting experiment ID suggested several times in the comments was completely turning off the cost of brains. To give a better fighting chance to the galaxy-brained, hyper-engineered bibbits to better show off their skills. I was expecting things to go pretty differently, but surprisingly, it did not. We got basically the same results as the first freefall. This challenges the analysis I had in the first video. I postulated that big brain bibbits were good, but were eventually wiped out based on poor energy efficiency. This seems to instead indicate that most of the designed species just weren't as good as the evolved species. Evolution wins against today. Sorry gods, maybe next time. And finally, an idea I found pretty funny. Instead of a free-for-all, why not have a battle royale? The difference being in that case that there will be no new plant spawned leading to an unsustainable environment and an existential spiral to death for all. Which contestants will survive the longest? Time to see. Like any of the previous free falls, there was a massive die-off to start, as the densely placed pibits collided with each other in this small ecosystem. Within the first several minutes, almost all of the initial plant pellets were eaten, leaving the remaining survivors to swim around amongst piles of dead, decaying bibbit meat. By 10 minutes, it was apparent that the end of days was near. 35 bibbits remained alive with only a few plant pellets and mostly meat pellets remaining as source of energy. Surprisingly, even in this doomsday ecosystem, bibby seemed to be relatively thriving, increasing its population to 10. Fast forward 10 more minutes and only 4 species remained. Bibi, Hudson V2, Pascali, and Nubi. Incredible. Even though Nubi is not at all attracted to meat pellets, it still managed to survive to the bitter end. It took only 3 more minutes for a singular bibit to be left standing. Hudson V2 remained wandering alone, desperately speeding from one pellet to the next. This species had a few traits that seemed to give it the upper end, including its medium size, aggressive speed, semi omnivorous diet gene, and laser focus extraction to meat pellet. Impressively, this singular Hudson was able to last a full 12 minutes longer, despite burning a consistent amount of energy to sustain itself. It would be reasonable to ask why such an amazing creature did not fare better in some of the other scenarios. Turns out, Hudson's want to lay neuron is always negatively biased, resulting in the species never having children. It makes sense as laying an egg is a pretty costly endeavor and unsustainable under these conditions. It's pretty funny how, in this case, the thing that made an organism successful is the exact opposite of what it normally takes. All the experiments were a lot of fun and again proved that unique rules and environments will completely change which species are the most successful. One of the reasons that this video took so much time to come out aside from the fact that I had to deal with the channel being suspended by YouTube by mistake, was that I was hard at work programming the next version of the simulation, which will be, as always, publicly available for free. I'm very proud of it and I worked a lot on modernizing and standardizing the simulation, as well as adding a lot more stuff. Like scenarios, which will make getting your initial population started, as well as testing the few curated experiments, a lot easier. You will also have access to a good amount of default bibits that you'll be able to introduce in your simulations. One of them is Lusco 6 Pridus right here. I have to warn you, however, be careful when introducing this one. It will rapidly reproduce to ungodly numbers if your map is too large or too energy dense. So head to hitch.io to download the new public version and read the full list of changes. So, 
I want to congratulate all the participants and thank everyone who submitted a bibit to this tournament. I acknowledge the immense amount of work that many of you put into this tournament. The long nights trying to engineer your bibits for those who did, the thousands of hours of simulation, and all of those who theorized together on the subreddit about the dynamics and best strategies for this tournament. If you want a glimpse of what some of them went through to prepare for this tournament, I will refer you to Skarik's incredibly detailed account of how he managed to raise Apophis Apocalypsis for the tournament. You'll find the link in the description. Another thing you can find in the description is a link to download the complete library of all the tournament participants. If you want to run your own experiments with them, feel free to do so. As always, I want to thank the people making this possible. You, the public. Watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. It means so much to see the numbers grow and knowing that the project becomes more and more self-sustaining. For the ones that want to go the extra mile, Patreon allows you to financially and directly support the project. Thanks to you, I'm able to keep improving it and not having to rely on the whim of the countless and soulless sponsors that are reaching out to me. So thank you all again, and I hope to see you next time.